Welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. My lesson today is on scatter plots and lines of fit. Our objectives are that students will interpret scatter plots, students will identify types of correlation between data sets, and students will write, interpret, and use lines of fit to model data. Here's what I'd like you thinking about today. How can you use a line of fit to make a prediction. So by definition, a scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between two sets of data. A scatter plot shows whether there is a correlation or relationship between the two data sets. A scatter plot shows whether there is a linear or nonlinear relationship between two data sets. And a scatter plot can be used to predict future or unrepresented outcomes in a scatter plot. Let's talk about the three types of correlation that you can observe in a scatter plot. So correlation is what describes the relationship between the two data sets. So our first graph here shows a positive correlation because as X is increasing, Y is also increasing. So if you consider each one of these ordered pairs, these points, as the x value increases, the y value, so it's getting higher. As x, we move across the x, the y is bringing up the points. The second one is a negative correlation. As x is increasing, you can see that the y coordinate is decreasing. You can also make a connection. If I drew a trend line in here, this trend line would have a positive slope, and this trend line would have a negative slope. And then our third type of correlation is no correlation. You can see that all of these points are truly just scattered throughout the graph and that there is no pattern. And we call that no relationship between the X and Y. We also could possibly have a trend in the data that is linear or nonlinear. Here we have a linear pattern because we could draw a line and show the trend of the data. So this is a linear trend. Over here, we have an arc or a curve to our data. So later on in Algebra 1, you will learn that this is a quadratic trend, and this is what we call nonlinear. Now let's practice reading a scatter plot. I took this from our state exam, and it represents students' heights and shoe sizes. So the two data sets that are represented in the scatter plot is we collected, somebody collected data and asked somebody their shoe size. All these students were asked their shoe size and their height. So the two sets of data are shoe size and height, noting that shoe size is the independent variable representing the domain and the height is the dependent variable representing the range. So the height right here is being shown to compare to the shoe size and we're trying to determine if there is a relationship between shoe size and height. Can we say that the height is dependent on the shoe size? So what happens to the height as the shoe sizes increases? So we look and we can see that the height is increasing as the shoe size increases. So I've drawn a trend line in here to show that this data is trending as X is increasing, Y is increasing. So as the shoe size increases, the height increases. The height of a student with a shoe size of five, what is that height? So we're gonna go over to 6.5 on our graph and we can see that this is increasing by intervals of one half. So we go up to our data point and we go over to the y-axis and it shows us that a shoe size of six and a half is somebody that is 63 inches tall. So that's how you read that. And then what is the shoe size of a student with a height of 65 inches? So we're gonna go to 65 inches on our graph, go over to our data point and down to our x-axis and determine that the shoe size would be eight and a half. So this is how you read and interpret a scatter plot. Here is an outlier. You can see that this data point is outside the trend of the data. So we have a positive correlation here with our data, and this data point is pretty far away from that, and we would call this an outlier. 
Now let's talk about line of fit. A line of fit can be drawn close to fit most of the data points when a scatter plot does not display no correlation between the data sets. So if you have a scatter plot that shows no correlation and the points are truly just scattered everywhere, you would not draw a line of fit because there's no correlation between the data. The line is sometimes referred to as a trend line, seeing as it's trending with the data. We can write the equation of a line of fit and use it to make predictions about data outside the collected data set. So let's practice writing an equation of a line of fit. First, we're going to learn the steps. Step one, if necessary, make a scatter plot of the data. So you might not be given the graph of the scatter plot. You might be given the data and need to graph it. Step two, determine if the data can be represented by a linear function. If you can, step three is to draw a line on the graph that fits the data or trending with the data. You do not need to draw a line through any of the specific data points on your graph, and there should be as many points above your line as below the line. And the last, identify two points on your line. These may not be data points. They could be, but they don't need to be. So now that you have two points, you can write the equation, as we've learned in our previous lessons in this bit, uh, unit, that you could find the slope and then use point slope or slope intercept form to write the equation of the line. So here we are. We're going to draw a line of fit. Here's my line of fit. You can see I ignore the outlier. And here it is, and I've drawn my line, and I have one, two, three points above it, and one, two, three points below it. So now I'm going to identify two points on my line. Here's one, five, sixty-one is that ordered pair. And then I'm going to use this point right here, which is eight and a half, sixty-five. So I've identified two points. Notice my two points are on my line my trend line or my line of fit. Now let's find our slope. 65 subtract 61, our change in y, over 8.5 subtract 5, our change in x, which gives me 4 over 3.5. And I'm going to round that to the nearest tenth. So I usually have my students round to the nearest tenth, unless there's something in the directions of the problem that tell you differently. Now I'm going to put this in slope intercept form. So I replace my m, my slope, with 1.1. And I'm going to use this point right here. When x is 5, y needs to be 61. So I'm going to use slope intercept form to solve for b. You could have also written this in point slope and solved for y. When I multiply, I get 5.5. And now let's subtract 5.5 from each side, giving me a y-intercept b of 55.5. So now we can go back and plug that in, and here's the equation in slope-intercept form of my line of fit. Now here I've brought our line forward, and I still have my trend line on our graph. I'm being asked to now interpret the slope and the y-intercept of our line of fit. So our slope is 1.1. Remember this is a rate. So what it's stating is, as my height increases by 1.1 inches, the shoe size increases by 1. So if I look at this, as my height increases by 1.1, my shoe size increases by 1. So that's where we're going here with our slope. And then we have our y-intercept, and in this case, in this problem, it's actually irrelevant. So be careful to these breaks in here. You wouldn't want to just look at it and see where it went. You would want to solve it mathematically. But it would state here that a shoe size of 0 has a height of 55.5 inches. It's not possible to have a shoe size of 0. So in this case, we just need to say that it's irrelevant to our two data sets. Now we're going to use our line of fit to predict. We're asked to predict the height of a student with a shoe size of 10. So our shoe size is our x, our input. So we're going to replace x with the value 10 and solve for y. When we multiply 1.1 times 10, we get 11. 
and we add our 55 and a half inches. That gives us a result that when we have a shoe size of 10, we should have a height of 66 and a half inches. So let's go check. So if I extend my trend line out, I go to 66.5 over to my trend line, and I have to extend my graph out, and it would come down to be 10 as a shoe size. So you can see, using my trend line, this makes sense. So 66 and a half inches is what I can predict that someone with a shoe size of 10 would have for height. Now it's your turn. Here's another example I've taken from our state assessment. And it's already graphed for you. And actually the trend line is even graphed for you because every student in a class could have a slightly little bit different trend line. And for this video purpose, I wanted us all to have the same answers. So I provided the trend line and the graph. I want you to pause the video and based on the trend line, determine what is the salary of a salesperson after three years of employment. Please pause now and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So we go to three years of employment on our graph, go up to our trend line and over to our Y, and we can determine that after three years of employment, a salesperson at Company Z would be making $40,000 a year. Now I'd like you to pause the video and determine what the slope of the line of fit is and also interpret it. Please pause and come back when you're ready to check. Welcome back. So I identify this one point first that they gave us a specific point. I'm going to use that as one. And then the second point I'm going to use, you could have used any point and you should come up with the same answer as I do. I'm going to use this point, which is 750,000. So seven and 50,000. So we're going to 55,000 subtract 50,000 is my change in my Y. All over nine subtract seven, my change in X. And that's 5,000 over two, which gives me a slope of 2,500. Now we're gonna interpret this and the slope is a rate. So a salesperson's salary increases at a rate of $2,500 per year of employment. So as the year goes up, their salary increases by $2,500. All right, now you're going to write an equation for the line of fit in slope intercept form. And after you do that, interpret the y-intercept of that equation. Please pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we had found our slope, which I can put in here, of $2,500. And now I'm gonna use our point nine and 55,000. So I know when X is nine, Y will be 55,000, and I can solve for B, my Y intercept. So I'm gonna multiply. 2,500 times nine is 22,500. Subtract that from each side of the equation, and I get, 32,500 is my y-intercept. Let's plug that in, and here's the equation of this line of fit. And the last thing I'm asked here is to interpret the y-intercept. And this time our y-intercept is relevant. It means that a salesperson's starting salary is 32,500. So if you interpreted this point, it would be zero, 32,500, and it means after zero years, it means as they're hired, they're making $32,500. Now, I'd like you to use this to predict. How much can a salesperson expect to make after 15 years of employment? Make sure you use your line of fit that we wrote in the previous problem to do this. Please pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So I'm gonna bring forward my equation of my trend line that we've already written, and I'm going to replace years of employment is our X, so 15 is going into X. So 2,500 times 15 is 37,500. Add our 32,500 and we get 70,000. So we can expect that after 15 years of employment, a person at Company Z 
would be making $70,000 a year. So there you have it. That's what we know about scatter plots and lines of fit and how to draw them, write the equation, interpret them, and use them to predict. Thanks for joining me where we are continuing to master math one video at a time. I hope you have a great day.